What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. So in this video, we are gonna be talking about Visa stock and Visa is going to be reporting earnings next week as well. So we're gonna be breaking down all the fundamentals. We'll be talking about the second quarter fiscal year 24 earnings that the company reported uh, a couple months ago. And then of course, talk about the expectations with regards to their third quarter fiscal year 24 numbers, which again, they're gonna be reporting on Tuesday, July 23rd. That's after the markets close. So hope you all enjoy this video. And a lot of you have been asking for a full detailed breakdown and updated analysis on Visa. So this is gonna be it. All I'm asking in return is you, you drop a like and of course subscribe to the channel. And also do check out the links below if you want to be a part of our MoneyVest community and get access to the entire platform. We just launched two weeks ago and the uh, review and the feedback has been absolutely amazing. We're going to be adding more features and more tools for all of you over time. So that's exactly what we're going to be utilizing today to analyze Visa, which trades at a 3.7 out of 5 M score. So going over to second quarter 2024 financial results, which were released on April 23rd, uh, starting with the net revenues, the company was able to capture a nice $8.8 billion in net revenues. That was up 10% on a year over year basis. The gap net income, the company's got a very strong profit margin of well over 50%. So we're looking at 4.7% gap net income. That was also up 10% on a year over year basis and earnings per share at $2.29, also up 12% on a year over year basis and non-gap net income increasing even more by 5.1 billion dollars that was up 17 percent year over year and non-gap net income was earnings per share two dollars and 51 cents up over 20 percent year over year the business uh, payment volumes here so in terms of business drivers up eight percent year over year cross border volumes up 16 percent then we got cross border volume total up 16 percent and processed transactions up 11 percent so overall spending continues across the board as we already know that inflation is very high compared to uh, of course the norm of two percent we're still battling the jerome powell monetary policy fomc is still battling to get inflation back down to their targeted two percent but in the last 12 18 24 months it's been higher as high as 9% from one year ago to now sitting at well over 3%. And as a result, a lot of folks, a lot of households and families over in the US are funding their lifestyle on the back of credit and debit cards, swiping left and right. As we know, the credit card debt is again at an all time high and well over $1 trillion. And as a result, spending, retail sales, everything has been strong. That's been shown to us by the earnings of these companies. And Visa, of course, since it's processing a lot of those transactions, continues to do really well. This right here is total cards in circulation. And what you'll notice is that Visa in the first quarter of fiscal year 2024 has seen a 4% increase uh, in 2024 versus 2023 to 1.3 billion cards in circulation in the first quarter of fiscal year 24, uh, 7% increase in debit cards to 3.1 billion and total at 4.4 billion cards issued by Visa uh, in circulation. And I'm sure, you know, obviously everyone, uh, who has credit cards, debit cards, has multiple cards, not just one. I myself have three cards uh, that are between uh, essentially two debit cards, three credit cards, and they're all mostly Visa, just one MasterCard. Uh, but Visa, of course, has a very wide and global network when it comes to the cards in circulation. I mean, nobody comes close to how many cards have issued and the payments network is very, very large. And Visa being one of the largest companies, if not the largest company when it comes to the overall reach, size, scale, and revenue. Uh, this right here is going to be the revenue results in the second quarter fiscal year 24. Uh, these are the growth rates. So 7% increase in service revenue, 12% increase in data processing revenue, uh, 4.5 to $4 billion. So those are the two primary drivers of overall revenue growth, along with international transaction revenue of almost $3 billion, 9% up year over year. Other revenue was up 37%, although it's a very, very small portion of the business, just over 750 million. And client incentives were offered worth $3.2 billion, such as rewards, and cashbacks and travel points and whatnot. And now they're looking at net revenues of $8.7 billion in net revenue for the company. So very, very significant increase of about 10% year over year. And when it comes to free cash flows, they're looking at $4.2 billion of free cash flow in the second quarter. And so far year to date, we're looking at $7.6 billion. And they've also returned cash to shareholders, which we can take a look at in our MoneyVest platform. $2.7 billion of share buybacks and about $1 billion in dividends. And so far in 2024, 
just over $6 billion of share buybacks and over $2.1 billion of dividends. Now, Visa has been one of the strongest, most highest quality companies out there, in my opinion, given how strong the fundamentals are, the business model, the margin, everything's just been stellar for the company and they're expecting for the entire growth in 2024 to be low double digits so 11 12 percent with operating expense growth also in the same low double digits here and diluted shares outstanding or earnings per share per se uh, also increasing in low teens we're looking at 13 14 15 percent in terms of that growth now coming over to our platform so if you come over to money best metrics let's just take a quick look on how well the company is doing let's say over the last seven years we've got growth to high growth across the board with about two percent share buybacks every single year so you can see the shares outstanding is actually going down every single year that is just goes to show the company is indeed buying back shares you can see that also in the fundamental analysis so if you come over let's say annual data and we go back for the last 10 years and under cash flows, you can come down here and under cash flow from financing activities, you can see common stock issued or repurchased. So you can see that line, right? So we've kind of laid it down for you so you can access every single line item and take it, take a look at it and visualize that as well. So if I click on this, I can essentially see how much the company has been buying back their own shares over the last 10 years. You can see that that is a negative number, meaning it's a cash outflow for Visa, right? Because it's an outflow, it's going out of the business and they're buying back shares. So that is a good thing that's being labeled or shown to us through shares outstanding going down and the company also putting in more and more money towards share buybacks. You can also see quarterly data. So if you come over to the last eight quarters, for example, again, every single quarter, they're putting in billions of dollars, 2.1 billion, 2.9 billion, 3.6 billion, 3.4 billion, 2.6 billion. Every single quarter, they're buying back more and more shares. That's exactly what we love to see. Now, coming back over to MoneyVest metrics for seven years, well, let's just go back to the last 10 years. Uh, what you'll notice is a very nice consistent growth in revenues. Uh, they have flatlined a little bit back in 2019, 2020, but then of course accelerating back up. And if you plot for gross profit, operating income, net income, all those line items, very, very strong business. It's one of the reasons why I love Visa so much. However, it does trade at a bit of an expensive valuation. However, I don't mind within a range of reasonable uh, values, which will calculate in, uh, in just a minute, I won't mind owning Visa for the long term because of the high quality of the business here. Again, everything moving in the right direction. So you can see gross profit over the last three years, very nice growth here. And net income has also increased. So if you come over to last five years, again, very nice growth. Uh, everything moving in the right direction from nine to 10%. Uh, last seven years, Kager is about 11 to 12%. Operating cash flow up 20%. Free cash flow up 21%. Now, margin wise, we're looking at gross margins slightly coming down in 2023. So if you plot for gross margins, operating margins, net margins, if you come over here, you'll notice a very, very stable across the board. However, gross margins slightly down to under 80% from let's say seven years ago when they were at well over 82%, but net margins have increased from 35 to now sitting well over 52%. So over 52 cents for every dollar is bottom line profit for the company, which is very, very good in terms of their margins. In terms of efficiency, the company is also very efficient. Return on assets, we're looking at well over 18% on average under 15%. Return on equity, very high at over 43%. In fact, that number has increased substantially over the years. So this is going to be return on uh, equity, return on invested capital, and return on capital employed. You can see the trend very well. It's been increasing. The company is becoming even more efficient as they're doing more transactions, more payment volume uh, with limited capital expenditure on a year over year basis. Balance sheet's also very, very strong. So we can take a look at that from a fundamental analysis standpoint. So let's go over to the last eight quarters, come over to balance sheet, look at their total cash sitting at well over $17.7 billion as of the quarter ending on March 31st. And then if you come down to total long-term debt, we're looking at $20 billion. But we can also take into account the long-term investments for the company over here, which is a separate line item under non-current assets, uh, sitting at well over $3 billion. So if you combine cash, $17.7 billion, with long-term investments of $3 billion, we're looking at well over $20 billion of um, cash and cash equivalents and long-term investments with long-term debt sitting at $20 billion. So they're about break-even, I would say, in terms of their cash and their long-term investments and the long-term debt that is present on the balance sheet at the moment. Um, and then of course, finally coming over to uh, free cash flow growth here. So last several quarters, it's been very, very stable. So if you change this to annual data and we're looking at last, let's say 20 years worth of free cash flows, very nice consistent increase to record cash flows last year at almost $20 billion. So 
Coming over to ratios, let's take a look at where it's trading now in terms of valuation. So we scroll all the way to the bottom, you look at price earnings ratio, trailing 12 months sitting at just under 30 versus an average of 45 on a five year basis. So again, trading at a somewhat of a discount, I would say compared to its five year average. And then if you take a look at price to earnings on a forward basis, 25 and a half, which is even lower, however, compared to its five year average sitting at under 20. So slightly more on the expensive side compared to its forward price to earnings. Price to sales at 14 and a half to 15.8 compared to 13 on a forward basis and 22 on a trailing basis. And then finally, price to free cash flow trailing 27 and free cash flow yield of 3.64% with price to operating cash flow sitting at just under 26. So if you come over to analyst estimates, so again, you can access this on our platform. We've got a strong buy on Visa, of course, with a high target of 357, low target of 267. It's trading at 265 pretty much. So even the lowest target is slightly higher than where Visa is trading at the moment with an average target of $316 with compounded annual growth rate for Visa over the next five years in earnings to go from $8.14 to well over $17 a share, so more than double in the next five years. And that's a compounded annual growth rate of 15 to 16%. So that's going to be the number that we can kind of utilize uh, in our analysis of the future for Visa. And if you come back over to MoneyVest Metrics and take a look at the last five years, uh, the net income growth has been about 11.3%. So that's going to be this number. And free cash flow growth has also grown at 10%. So these are the two numbers on over the last five year basis, how well the company has grown its bottom line profit and free cash flows as well, about 10 to 11 percent. And analysts are forecasting for about 15 to 16 percent in terms of valuation. It's averaged about 25 to 30. So now that we know these numbers, now that we understand that these are the numbers for Visa, we can come over to the analyzer tab. We can use both discounted cash flow and discounted earnings. So let's start with the DCF first. And I want to re-emphasize that the DCF is a deep discounting model, which is most likely going to discount the future cash flows quite aggressively. And the fair value oftentimes ends up being really low. That's exactly why I like to use the discounted earnings model, because it puts us within a realistic and reasonable range of the market price because the markets are trading at a bit of a premium trading at over expensive valuations the dcf models are very very difficult to implement in current market environment they were very useful back in the 1920s 30s when the markets were relatively cheaper and warren buffett and graham um, benjamin graham were using these models to better assess which businesses are undervalued which ones are not but now since most companies are trading at very expensive multiples it's really difficult to use the DCF model. So I just want to preface by saying that. So next five years, let's just assume the discounted cash flow last five years was 10%. It continues to grow at 10%. And we look at the terminal growth rate at 3%, 12% discount rate, 10% margin of safety. I, I believe Visa pays a very small dividend. So if you want to come over to the overview page, uh, you'll notice a dividend for the company is about 0.75% with a 21% payout ratio and a dividend per share of just under $2. So we can still go with a 12% discount rate considering that the dividend yield is not super high. So keeping everything intact, shares outstanding going down by let's say 2.5%. I believe they're gonna be a little bit more aggressive with their share buyback. If we hit calculate now, we get a overvaluation by over 42% for Visa with an estimated fair value at $152. And this again is purely based on math. This is nothing more, nothing less, simply based on future cash flows, which you'll notice free cash flows over here. This is the discounted cash flow, discounting them back for five years by 12% discount rate. Uh, that's the final verdict, which based on simple math here, we consider Visa to be overvalued based on discounted cash flows and a fair value ending up at around $152. But if you come over to the discounted earnings model, and again, the growth rate is going to be a little bit higher in this case because earnings are expected to, let's say, grow at 15 to 16%. And we go with the P multiple, which is not super high at 35 or 40, go with somewhat more reasonable at 30 and share buyback again, minus 2.5% because I believe it's going to be a little bit more aggressive. And now if we hit calculate, it's going to be within range. It's actually going to put Visa somewhat undervalued at almost 17% undervalued with an estimated intrinsic value of $310. So this right here is going to be that sensitivity grid. And I believe 30 times multiple is also a bit too high with the same growth rate of 16% and a multiple of 26, I believe 24 to 26, our fair value drops down to 248 to 260 dollars, which I believe personally is going to be a lot more appropriate for Visa, anywhere between 240s and 260s. So call it 250s uh, is going to be a reasonable range for Visa to be its intrinsic value 
with a 16% compounded annual growth rate for its earnings. But of course, this kind of cash flow puts us even lower. So the idea here is to find good deals, is to find high quality companies such as Visa, right? Very high quality business. It's got a very strong moat and a walled garden similar to what Apple has, but in the payment services business, not a lot of companies can kind of break through or pierce through that wall. So it's got a moat, it's got long-term proposition for its earnings growth, but it's just trading at a bit more on the expensive side. However, there's nothing wrong with changing your analysis, right? So that's why we've built this calculator so that you can figure it out. You can you can do your analysis, you can input your own estimates and figure out what's the true intrinsic value based on your analysis. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just trying to figure out last five years, last 10 years, how has the business done? What is the future forecast based on analysts? What do I believe about the future to be for this company? And then figure it out for yourself. For me personally, I think 250s is a reasonable level where I would feel a lot more comfortable at least starting a bit of a position here. Uh, so that's going to put us down here inside this green rectangle. And that's the level that I've been talking about for Visa for quite some time. But right now, if I were to essentially put down a lower high and lower low pattern, so this right here is the overall downtrending channel within which Visa is trading at. So that's the lower high and the lower low pattern as it continues to slowly and steadily kind of make its way down. It's coming down from its all time highs of 290. So that's gonna, that's what we're already down almost 9%. But if we do end up, let's say in the 250s post earnings, 13% uh, sell off is quite reasonable. And that could be a good starting point for myself. Dollar cost averaging all the way down to potentially low 200 if and when we ever get there. Earnings wise, uh, expectations are for 241 per share, revenue at just shy of $9 billion. And right now we're still struggling at this resistance. We're gonna go ahead and turn this level back into a resistance for Visa. And the support level is going to stay put down here at 249, 250, all the way down to 234, all the way down to $208. So those right there are going to be the three levels we're watching for Visa. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And what do you believe that Visa's true, true intrinsic value is? Share the sensitivity grid in our Discord. If you're part of our MoneyVest platform, you can do your analysis. And I want to see the matrix, what you come up with as the fair value for Visa. So hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget 51% discount is available for the platform that's available until the end of this month of July. So links gonna be down below. We'd love to have you on board and uh, happy investing. And I'll see you all in the next video.